Happy Tuesday! Let's see about some things that happened on September 24th in the past. Hi there and welcome to This Day in History for September 24th. September 24th is the 267th day of the year in the Gregorian calendar, 268th in leap years with 98 days remaining to the end of the year. Today's word is sack. Sack can be a noun or a verb and has a variety of meanings. <laughs> we'll briefly talk about most of those meanings, but I've been asked in particular about the word sack as it pertains to, say, for instance, the sacking of Rome. So here we go. As a noun, a sack is usually a rectangular bag that may be used to ship or store material or contain various kinds of merchandise or for holding mail. As a noun, again, a sack may refer to a woman's loose-fitting dress or a short coat or jacket, usually loose-fitting, and may be made in indoor or outdoor styles. Sack may refer to a base in the game of baseball, or it may serve as a sort of slang word that means bed, as in, I'm going to hit the sack now. <laughs> as a verb, the sack could mean to put or place in a sack, whenever it's groceries or farm produce, for instance or to tackle a quarterback behind the line of scrimmage, or to fire someone from a job. In that context, it might be said that I sacked that lazy employee, or Jimmy got sacked, or Jimmy got the sack. Sack might also mean to plunder, as in a town that gets sacked after being captured, or to strip of valuables. Most, if not all, of the aforementioned definitions and uses of the word sack can be attributable to some relationship with putting things into a bag or a sack. The word sack itself most likely comes to us from many of a variety of Old English and West European sources, possibly even evolved from Latin, Greek, or Semitic origins. First known use of the word sack depends on the context in which you're using it, for instance, Sack as an article of clothing can be traced back to the 1200s. Sack as a bed or place to sleep is seen by 1825. The use of the word sack as the act of plundering dates to around the 1540s. Interesting word with many uses, sack. Inspired by a recent episode about the sacking of Rome, today's word sack was suggested by Mr. Bowers, who asked, why did they call it sacking? How about sack for word of the day? So here we are. And if you have a word you'd like to see in this word of the day segment, drop it in the comments. We'll take a look at it. And with that, the United States Congress passed the Judiciary Act on September 24, 1789. This act created the Office of Attorney General and the federal judiciary system and defined the composition of the Supreme Court. September 24th, 1869 is known as Black Friday or the Black Friday Gold Panic of September 24th, 1869. The panic ensued when gold prices plummeted. When United States President Ulysses S. Grant ordered the Treasury to sell large quantities of gold. He did this to thwart the efforts of a couple of yahoos who were trying to enrich themselves by cornering the gold market. The lead up to it was that a couple of investors named Jay Gould and James Fisk conspired with a speculator named Abel Corbin. The three of them called themselves the Gold Ring. They got the brilliant idea that they would corner the gold market, try to force the price of gold up on the New York Stock Exchange, making themselves wealthy in the process. Now, this was in the recovery period after the war between the states, which many people call the Civil War, even though there was nothing civil about it. it. was a war with armies between the states. Anyway, Corbin happened to be President Grant's son-in-law. So Gould and Fisk figured if they could become buds with Corbin, 
They could get an invitation to the White House, become buds with the president maybe, and obtain information that would be helpful to their plot. Gold and Fisk began buying gold and lots of it, successfully driving the price up until President Grant recognized what was happening. He ordered the release of $4 million in government gold. And remember, this was in 1869. $4 million is a lot of money right now. It was a lot more money back then. This action successfully drove gold prices down, crushing the gold ring's corner on the gold market. Unfortunately, it also sent Wall Street into a panic with months of economic turmoil following. I don't think we had quite a big depression just yet over that, but it was a panic all the same. These guys, Gould and Fisk, managed to hire really good lawyers who kept them out of prison. This is the birthday of author F. Scott Fitzgerald, born September 24, 1896. He was an American novelist, essayist, short story writer, and screenwriter best known for his novels depicting the flamboyances and excess of the jazz age. He published four novels and hundreds of short stories, many of which appeared in popular magazines, such as Saturday Evening Post, Collier's Weekly, and Esquire. His titles include The Great Gatsby and Tender is the Night. F. Scott Fitzgerald lived to the age of 44. President Theodore Roosevelt proclaimed Devil's Tower in Wyoming as the nation's first national monument on September 24, 1905. Happy birthday, Honda! <laughs> the Honda Motor Company was founded on September 24, 1948. On a personal note, I'll tell you that Mr. Bowers introduced me to Honda automobiles way back in the 1990s. and. I've driven Honda of one sort or another ever since, <laughs> so happy birthday, Honda. <laughs> now we have a playlist of episodes for this day in history, as well as a playlist of single subjects called How About That, and words of the day in a playlist called There's a Word for That, and I'll leave links to those playlists for you. Today's song is Cherish by The Association. Cherish began a three-week run in the number one spot on the Billboard Hot 100 on September 24, 1966. Inspired by the Righteous Brothers' emotional, slow-tempo song, You've Lost That Love and Feelin', Cherish was written by the association's lead vocalist, Terry Kirkman. Cherish certified gold in 1966, which means it sold over half a million copies. Cherish by the association. Number one on September 24th, 1966. Link in the description. Alrighty, that's it for today. I hope you all have a wonderful day, and I'll see you tomorrow. This is the birthday of author F. Scott Spitz. <laughs> and I think that's going to do it for us today. Thank you so much for watching. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. Feel free to share this video with the link in your email, messaging, or social media. If you enjoy this series, you can check out the playlist that contains these videos. I'll put a link to that in the description. That description lives on YouTube, so for other platforms, I'll include a link to my blog page called No Really. <laughs> and you can also find me on Rumble, BitChute, and Odyssey. All those links in that description. Alrighty, that's all I can think of right now. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time. Alrighty, back to work. I think we got it this time.